pleasure to welcome our chairman of the Major Taylor Association's uh, Monument Committee to uh, the podium, Edmund. I'm going to have to verify this. Let me, let me get a closer look. Let's see if I remember that right. It's Quentin Wheeler. That might be Andre Phillips. I'm in lane four. You're in lane five. It's pretty close. So good. And if I was you, I would show this in my office too. But it's true. Well, I'm just uh, very pleased to be here to represent uh, a lot of sportsmen who have found out about the story of Major Taylor, and uh, especially the international sportsmen, cyclists, and people from all over the world who have uh, heard about the story because I've sent out hundreds um, of the um, links to the website, and uh, people who follow me and look me up always tend to be reminded of uh, the reason we are here today. It's uh, a glorious day. It's been a long time. Lynn, thank you very much for uh, even having gotten me involved uh, many, many years ago. I was trying to find out exactly how long it was that, that uh, we came together, but uh, out of the clear blue sky, I got a call from Lynn, and she told me about the story, and uh, I had no knowledge of Major Taylor at the time, and I heard the story and uh, it was something that I wanted to get involved with, and it's been a long, hard road. You've heard from several people up here how long and how hard and how treacherous the road has been. But today, um, I feel the wind blowing. I feel the wind blowing from the Wooster whirlwind. Everybody who's around here, I'm sure you can feel us involved and wrapped in, in uh, the wind that's blowing today. It's a fantastic, beautiful day to be celebrating this great man. May 21st. 2008. Fantastic and glorious day indeed. I'm going to talk about, uh, and I'm going to be brief because everyone's told you about the stories of the hardships that, uh, that Marshall Major Taylor has withstood. But there's three things that really come to my mind in treating and dealing with this whole story. And that's one of people, one of the politics of the time, and one of sport. And in terms of the people, everyone's heard the saying that evil has an ability to prevail when good men do nothing. Today, we're seeing the exact opposite. When good people want to do something, you can wipe out evil and make it right. Uh, one name that hasn't been mentioned today. Anyone who's read the book. Uh, the coach and the manager, Lewis Munger, I think is a name that we have to talk about today because he took a chance uh, with the major and supported him, got him in races, and was with him all the way. Uh, the Major Taylor Associ Association, um, the state of Massachusetts, the city of Worcester, Antonio Mendez, Senator Harriet Chan uh, Chandler, Lynn Tolman, and all the host of other people uh, that Lynn mentioned and all the other groups of supporters who have made this possible. Those are the people who have changed this around. Uh, in terms of politics, <clears throat> my organization has uh, gone by the mantra of one of the most famous people in the world, Nelson Mandela. Yes. And when Nelson Mandela came to our initial event, uh, we had a speech prepared for him that he read. And after he gave his prepared speech, he gave a speech from the heart. And in it, he said that sport has the power to change the world. It can give hope where there once was despair. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is a day for hope, a day of hope. The Major Taylor story is very, very important. If you don't understand the history of what he went through, then it's bound to repeat itself. And today, we're making an, an acknowledgment of what's happened and honoring a great man. When it comes to sport, many are called, but few are chosen. Today, we are calling back one that through his deeds and actions chose himself to be honored here today. One who was subjected to racial discrimination and hatred of the Jim Crow era, 
who relocated himself voluntarily here to the city of Worcester, then became the best, most prolific cyclist of his time. Marshall Major Taylor is a man of all times in the world of sports, the first African-American international sports star. Now, we all know of a lot of the trials and tribulations of other African-Americans that have suffered from discrimination and their stories. Arthur Ashe in the 1970s, Jackie Robinson, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1947, also Tommy Smith, the 1968 Olympics, Muhammad Ali suffered a lot, Henry Aaron in 1974, Jack Johnson in the 1920s, Jesse Jackson, Jesse Owens, excuse me, in 1936. Today, we are here to recognize forever the person who has been missing from this list, the, first, the person who should be first on the list. After today, Marshall Major Taylor will take his rightful spot at the top of this distinguished list after more than 100 years. For me, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. We've been waiting for this day for, for years and years and years, and uh, I just can't wait to see uh, the statue. I know it's going to be fantastic and beautiful. And um, Stacy, something that you said was very, very important. It's all about the kids, because the children who will come here and see this statue, um, our future is in the children. The children are going to be running our country. Um, are we're going through a lot here in terms of politics and racism and discrimination and, and uh, the politics of the day. Uh, we need to look back and really make peace with ourselves on these issues. But it's the kids that are going to make the difference. And when we educate those kids and give them the opportunity to be at peace with themselves, regardless of what color, what religion, what gender, um, what type of situation you come from, we've made a, a very, very big difference.